Welcome everybody to another motocross action video. Today we are testing the 2023 KTM 300 SX. That's right, KTM's 300 two-stroke motocross specific bike. It's got fuel injection, electric starting, electric power valve, the all new chassis, all the goods. This is a brand new bike from KTM. They hadn't produced a 300 motocross bike before. Uh, they've done it in the cross country side, but not for motocross. So we are going to explain all we know about this bike in this video. You might have seen our versus video a few weeks back. If you haven't, you can check it out where we put this bike up against a Husky. But in this video, we are only talking about the 300 sharing with you guys all we know about this bike after lots of hours of riding and racing it. This bike is all new for 2023 and it's technically a first generation bike as KTM has never produced a 300cc motocross bike before. They've had 300cc big bore kits for their 252 strokes and they've made 300 off-road bikes but not like this one. The 300 comes in at a unique time when KTM is changing two strokes as we know them. They ditched the traditional Makuni TMX carburetor with its main jet, pilot jet, needle, and air screw and they added a new ECU and throttle position sensor to be able to handle fuel injection and they also started using Kian's 39 millimeter throttle body with dual injectors to moderate the fuel air ratio going into the combustion chamber. Then they ditched the spring loaded power valve and added an electronic power valve and they ditched the kickstarter and added a button. Now with electric start, electric power valve, electronic fuel injection, you might think that KTM is getting a little cocky with all the electronics but I should offer a little bit of context that Yamaha has already been using an electronic power valve on their YZ252 strokes, but the difference is that theirs is opened with a cable and KTM's is using an electronic motor with gears. As for the engine, the 300SX is very similar to the new 2023 KTM250SX. It uses the same bottom end with a bigger bore in the cylinder though, that's the only difference. So the 250SX, it has a 66.4 millimeter bore with a 72 mil stroke, while the 300, it uses 72 bore, 72 stroke in the cylinder to get that extra cubic centimeters of displacement. Along with the changes to the engine, the 300SX also has a new 2023 chassis to match the rest of the two-stroke and four-stroke motocross bikes from KTM. A big question we get about this bike is, who is it made for? Unfortunately, the AMA still won't let 300cc two-strokes race in the 450 class, so you can't race this at the Pro Motocross Nationals, you can't race it at Supercross, or at any AMA events like Loretta Lens, where the two-stroke is regulated to 250 cc's in the 450 classes. However, this bike is able to be raced in any two-stroke open class like the World Two-Stroke Championship at Glen Helen and in the VET classes. So really, the 300SX, it's only more of a tease for pros who might be interested in racing it at the high-level races, but it's great for mostly everyone else who is liking to race this bike locally. Diving into the engine character, there are some huge differences between how this bike runs and how a carbureted 2022 KTM 252 stroke or a big bore 300 252 stroke from last year runs. The new, highly sophisticated sophisticated fuel injection system delivers a perfect air fuel ratio for an instant controllable power at all times, truly broadening the horizon for usable power on a two-stroke. 300SX, it is much more friendly off the crack of the throttle than the, this 252 stroke was in 2022. The carburetor two-stroke engines, they require a lot more skill to maintain the RPMs and keep the engine in the sweet spot of the power. The new 300, it has a four-stroke like power that picks up instantly without lag. One once fuel injected four strokes came into their prime, they became easier for riders to lug the bike in the corners and hit the throttle with instant response. Like this 300SX, it is new to the electronic game, it's new to the fuel injection game, and it is also becoming easier to roll on the throttle as you come out of corners. And I think as the bike continues to evolve and KTM continues to improve on the mapping in electronics, this thing will get even better. Also, unlike with transfer port injection, the TPI KTM off-road bikes that you've known before, those bikes you didn't have to pre-mix the fuel, they were oil injected. For the 300SX and all of the motocross models for KTM, Husqvarna, and Gas Gas next year, you do have to pre-mix your fuel. 
So the big question is, how does the KTM 300SX run on the track? Well, this bike is masterful in the corners because of its smooth roll-on power, you're actually able to navigate every type of corner with ease. Typically, tighter off-camber and technical corners would be much more of a challenge on a two-stroke, but the instant pickup coming off the crack of the throttle gives our testers a much more manageable power right away. In the mid-range, the extra 50 cc's is noticeable in that you don't have to shift as much as you do when you compare this bike to the 2023 KTM 252 stroke. The stock carbureted 2022 and prior model KTMs took some serious clutch work to get into the power and they weren't as easy to lug around in the corners. You needed a really good engine tuner or you really needed to know what you were doing with your carburetor to get that smooth lug on power with a 252 stroke from KTM but naturally they weren't made to lug around the corners. You really had to work to get them into the power. Yamaha YZ 252 strokes, now that's a different story. Those are easier to lug and easier to cruise around the corner at quarter throttle where the KTM 252 stroke more of a light switch power band and you had to get it up into the power to get going. Thanks mostly to the electronic fuel injection, but also to that extra 50 cc's inside the cylinder. The 300 is much easier to lug in second gear and third gear in some of the sweeping corners. And that's the biggest difference between the new fuel injected bikes and the carbureted ones is that this bike is easier to roll on the throttle in the corners, making it much easier to ride. In its stock form, the 300 SX is exceptionally fast, allowing you to pull a wheelie at will and easily clear any jump in front of you. Our biggest complaint with the new fuel injected two strokes from KTM and Husqvarna is the rev limiter. Rev limiters are far from normal on two strokes. With carburetors directing a fixed amount of fuel and air into the combustion chamber, we never had to worry about a rev limiter on two strokes. When we over revved a two stroke engine, eventually it runs out of fuel, but the bike still tries to make power. Now, with the ECU controlling how much fuel and air goes into the combustion chamber, the rev limiter is set to protect the engine from going beyond its intended RPM range. So we quizzed the KTM engineers, we asked them, hey, what's the deal about this rev limiter? and they explained the fuel injection technology allows the engine to rev up much quicker than a traditional carburetor, which in turn requires a rev limiter to protect it from going too far. So the big benefit of fuel injection is instant power on the bottom end, but the downside is the rev limiter on the top end. However, after we worked on it more and rode this bike and got more comfortable, we realized that the rev limiter typically clicks in when we're using the clutch and revving up the bike, or if we're revving up the bike mid-air. When you're on the ground and the bike is under low, you're in the deep dirt, you're not gonna hit the rev limiter, and it's much harder to find it. As for the two maps that we mentioned at the top of the video, our test riders felt that map one was easier to manage in the tighter sections, while map two was faster and more exciting all the way through the RPM range. So a big question we get about the 2023 KTM and Husky two strokes is can you adjust the mapping? And up until recently, KTM changed their ECU system starting on the 2021 and a half factory edition models, so the 2022 models. They changed the ECUs on all those bikes and now you can't remap a stock KTM ECU anymore. It's a big bummer. Before you used to take your stock ECU over to Twisted Development, they could remap it. It didn't have the same parameters that Vortex gave you, uh, so it wasn't as big of adjustments that they could do with the stock ECU, but you could save money and still get the power tailored to you and uh, dialed in on your KTM Husky or Gas Gas. Now the ECUs are locked and the only way you can customize maps for your KTM four stroke is by purchasing an aftermarket Vortex ECU. And like I mentioned, and Twisted Development, they can have a great track record for tailoring the power to your personal preference and skill level. Currently, KTM, Husky, Gas Gas, Honda, Kawasaki, and Suzuki all use Kian ECUs on their bikes, while Yamaha is the only brand that's using a proprietary unit that they come up with themselves. Right now, Vortex has the technology to replace the Kian ECUs and the Yamaha ECUs, but they don't have the ability to tap into the 2023 Austrian two-strokes yet because these ECUs are made by a different company called Continental. So for now, we talked to Vortex, they don't plan on developing ECUs for these bikes, but 
There's a big butt. Tuners all over the US are working long and hard trying to figure out how to crack into the ECUs. Right now, WMR Motorsports in Florida, the same dealership that also runs Nihilo Concepts, they have cracked the code and they have been remapping 2023 Austrian two shots. They've been playing with the rev limiter and stuff like that. Everyone else, including Twisted Development, they're still working long and hard trying to crack into these bikes. So how does the 300 run on the dyno? Well, this bike has a smooth and linear dyno curve, which started showing the 300 SX producing 27 horsepower at 5,000 RPM, but by 6,000 RPM, it jumped up to 34 horses. It jumped up to 39 at 6,500 RPM, 45 horsepower at 7,000 RPM, and just over 50 horsepower at 7,500 RPM. Long story short, the 300 SX, it comes on with authority, making serious power down low, but the steep climbing power starts to lessen after 7,500 RPM. So that's right, this bike does not like to be revved super high like the KTM four strokes do, but it does still keep climbing. At 8,500 RPM, the 300 SX two stroke peaks at 55 horsepower in Mach 2, which barely edges out the Suzuki RMZ 450 in peak power. Surprisingly, Mach 1 only opens 80%, but the dyno chart, it doesn't show such a big difference in numbers. The power curve is identical between Mach 1 and map 2 on the dyno. 6700 RPM, that's where map 2 slightly starts to separate itself and map 1 sticks right behind and peaks at 54.19 horsepower. So almost a horsepower below map 1 is, but on the track you can feel that difference a little bit more than you can see it on the dyno. Comparing these numbers to the 2023 Husqvarna TC250 fuel injected two-stroke, the 300 model is almost three horsepower stronger. The TC250 also has a linear power curve and it peaks at 52.12 horsepower at 8600 rpm so similar power curve just slightly lower on total peak horsepower further comparison shows the 2023 ktm 450 is five horsepower stronger on peak and it pulls higher it pulls up to 9800 rpm so that's an extra 1300 rpm longer than the ktm 300 two stroke we've been talking about diving into the next question how does this bike handle on the track well thankfully it did not take as long to break in the 300 as it did to break in our 2023 KTM 450. With the stiffer chromoly steel frame on the 450, it took 10 hours for us to finally get comfortable. But the 300 is using the same style frame, almost the same exact frame, just a little bit different cradle to hold the 300 two-stroke engine. It was comfortable after less than two hours of break-in time. So we're guessing it's the combination of softer suspension on this bike, a lighter engine, and the two-stroke power band that made the 300 SX so much easier to ride out of the box. On the track, the 300 SX is stable at speed and handles stutter and braking bumps with ease. And with the new chassis, the new engine position in the frame, it helps the 300 SX not squat so much under acceleration and it doesn't pitch back and forth coming into corners as well. So the big bore 300 CC engine, our testers noticed that it did feel slightly harder to initiate corners and try to come in and, and turn on a dime than it was on the 252 stroke. So we tested this bike in conjunction with a 252 stroke from Husqvarna, the same fuel injected model, same chassis, just with the lowered platform. The extra inertia of the big bore piston made it slightly harder to dip into the turn. So overall, the 300 SX, it was a ton of fun to ride. It has a balanced feel coming in and out of turns that allows you to put more power to the ground on exit and stop quicker on entrance. And the fuel injected power is so smooth coming out of the corners. That was my favorite part about this bike is that it's so easy to roll on into the power. It makes it better when you're riding slippery tracks and also is still great for the softer, deeper tracks as well. So when riding this bike back to back with the 23 Husqvarna TC250 that I just mentioned. The KTM's suspension is traditional height, while the Husqvarna has the lowered suspension one inch lower to the ground. The KTM suspension held up much stronger and stiffer in the valving, and the Husky was a lot softer, more tailored to a novice or a vet rider. So thank you guys for tuning in to Motocross Action's tested video on the 2023 KTM 300 SX2 Shoke. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We did a comparison video with this bike and the Husky TC252 Shoke. You can type that in and uh, find it on our YouTube channel. Thank you guys for watching. See you in the next video.